This is the entrance to Suzanne Barnett's garden and home. She's lived here for 57 years, collecting unusual objects and making many of them herself. After the 1989 Loma Prieta earthquake, many of her collectibles were broken, and as a sort of therapy, she decided to make art with the pieces and put her creations around her yard and house. This hobby led to her involvement with community television, where she has produced over 1,200 shows, creating art and interviewing artists. Suzanne's father, a Freudian psychoanalyst, once told her, it's not so much the objects you collect and make, it's the memories that you associate with the objects that count. So it came as a shock for many of us that after 21 years of doing television about art and collecting objects and interviewing artists and furnishing her home with the beautiful things that she's collected, that all of a sudden she decided to sell it and move to the Forum, a smoke-free retirement facility not far away. Some of her friends thought that she'd gone completely out of her mind because Suzanne said that she would never leave her beloved home. And yet this is exactly what she decided clearly and firmly to do. This is a remembrance of her house and the things that she loved in it. It is also a record of a seemingly difficult move, downsizing and getting rid of her most valuable collections. You'll see Suzanne as she goes from the familiar into the world of the unknown. And perhaps, if you've had to downsize and move, you can identify with what she's been through. For those of you who are considering simplifying your life and moving from your home that you've loved for many years, perhaps you'll find her story very helpful and inspiring. Welcome to my living room. This is probably one of my most favorite rooms because I think that of all the things that I've collected, I put the things that are probably the most um, meaningful to me. And of course, what's so interesting about collecting is that it's really not necessarily the object but it's how did you get it and where did you get it? Are you going to give it away? Are you going to keep it? My problem is that I like to keep everything. So uh, people that have been to my home think that it's a museum. But what's so interesting about my collection is that it comes from all over. It comes from a uh, flea market that I go to once a month in Palo Alto. Uh, some of these things that I have made myself, like the uh, mobile, that was very disappointing because I expected it to move. And the only thing that I could do to make it move would be to put a fan underneath it, which I'm not about to do, unless I actually could get some fantastic fan from the flea market. The, the, one of the things that I'm just absolutely crazy about is my tree chair. That's actually part of a tree. But what's so interesting about it is that the branches, the artist has left the branches and made the tree into a chair. I happen to love uh, animals and so because I don't have any real ones but I have some imitation ones and they're very dear to me. The painting up on that wall was done by a very very fine artist that I commissioned and she said that she wanted to do a portrait of me. Well when I got the painting, I was the good news was that I, I, it wasn't a portrait because I always wanted to look like Elizabeth Taylor. But the other thing about it is that there are many different objects that uh, are representative of me. The painting 
that is very dear to me is of the red rose. And I used to live in, in Mendocino. The artist was a good friend of mine. Her name is Dora Bothwell, and she passed away a long time ago. Uh, but it's, it's uh, very reminiscent of my friendship with her and her wonderful ability. I love roses. That Salvador Dali picture I inherited from my mother when she passed away, uh, signed by Salvador Dali. My husband called New York to one of the Salvador Dali dealers and described the picture to him. And, and on the back, it has all its authenticity. So we thought it was really going to be worth millions of dollars. The dealer from New York said, did you see Salvador Dali sign that? So, uh, and not only that, but it probably is, is a uh, fake. And Salvador Dali didn't do pictures uh, of ladies on the shelf. The curator from one of the museums that I wanted to donate some uh, of my art to came over and she looked at practically everything and the one thing that she said that she really liked was this picture that my granddaughter Kelly uh, made when she was five years old and it was a picture that she uh, did because we had gone to the Foothill College flea market and that was a hat I bought. The sunglasses were glasses that I bought for her and uh, the curator was just crazy about that picture. She said I would take that because it was done by your granddaughter and she was five years old at the time and I said no I couldn't part with that. It's a true story. One of the larger pieces that I've made that I'm going to talk about is that war horse. I guess he's a war horse. I found the body of him at one of the flea markets and I had a lot of things. That's what I call my assemblage art. That was one of the things that I had the most fun making. This is one of the last pieces of art that I have done because I'm so busy. But it's been one of the most uh, fun pieces when I tell people about that. It's a lady alligator having a bad hair day. And these are telephone wires. And of course I have all kinds of stuff on it. But she's in a good mood because she found this guy to eat. I did this 23 years ago, this piece, and I did it because I was so nervous about doing my first show on TV that I, I just had to do something to get my mind off of, of that, so I made this guy. Such a cute story, I'd love to tell that outside, which we could do today on the deck. I have to tell you about this room. My house was designed by a Frank Lloyd, a graduate of Frank Lloyd Wright. He and my first husband and I had such a wonderful time uh, going through the process of designing the house. We were both in our early 20s with, with uh, two babies and I thought I could never live up here. And I did not want to live in the hills. But after the house was designed, I, I just went nuts over it. But this room, the architect said that because of this vast, fabulous view, that he didn't want to put the windows all the way down to the floor. So he made it like we were on on the on a ship 
This room originally was uh, a very interesting room because it housed my first husband's grandmother's collection of fine uh, European and Japanese art. Um, and it was not a dining room because I didn't want a dining room because I don't like to cook. And I was in my Japanese period and everything, uh, we had pillows on the floor and I had made a mosaic table in the living room. And so that was where we would have our parties. So anyway, when I married my second husband, George Barnett, the judge, who loved to cook, he said, why don't we make this into a dining room? And that's exactly what we did. And we did have a lot of parties here. And of course, uh, he passed away. And instead of having parties, it was just a perfect place for me to collect and put more of my stuff in here. So this is just a real, real museum room. This is absolutely one of the most interesting pieces of, if you want to call it art, that I have. I purchased it in, uh, on the way to Mendocino, and it, it uh, was so unattractive that it caught my eye, because when something is so unattractive, all of a sudden you can see the beauty in it, it's so practical, it lights up. It's a three-way fan. However, it had a, uh, a cord that, that needed replacing. What happened is that my daughter at that time was going with P. Panofsky's son. And P. Panofsky was the brilliant scientist who started the linear accelerator. He had to give up on this cord because it was so difficult. He turned it over to his sons, but I feel that it's a Panofsky piece, and it's very dear to my heart. I am so proud of my sofa. I had the worst sofa for 30 years, decided that I had to get another one, and after looking at least two to three hundred sofas, some in the shops around here, but mainly online. And I found this online and everybody said, how could you ever buy a sofa online when you haven't even sat on it? But it was a bargain and I love it. It's comfortable. Plus the fact that red is my favorite color to go with my work of art that took me four bloody years, literally. I cut each piece of glass and I applied, uh, I had the, the table made, the, the base of the table made first because I knew that I was going to uh, copy a Tiffany lamp that uh, I saw. So I cut each piece with a glass cutter and then I finished it with the other stuff with uh, files. After I cut every single piece, I would apply aluminum foil under to give it uh, more light. If I had it to do over again, which I never would do, I would uh, have put it on glass, a huge piece of glass and then I would have had light coming underneath it. However, this is probably the art piece that took me four years to make. I didn't do it all the time because it was so tedious, but I'm very pleased with it now. My mosaic table is one of my dearest, dearest possessions. Interestingly enough, Mel Van Dusen, who is one of my very best friends in the world, found the table for me. And the, one of the reasons that I love it is because it's mosaic. 
I used to be into mosaics, and when I saw the workmanship on this, it was something that I had to have, and I treasure it. I have run out of places except on my walls, so look, I started putting things on my wall, and those are just different pieces of jewelry and so forth that I've collected. Uh, most of the things up there, um, I used to do needlepoint, and that's petty point of the frog. Uh, plus, I these are my favorite weird hats and some of my artwork, and I've made jewelry, which I'll show you in just a minute. During my jewelry period, I've had many different periods of my art. Uh, I had a broken fan and it had these little holes so it was just perfect to make as a necklace. The bracelet I have on are of course different pieces of broken jewelry and so forth. I love to put broken things uh, together to use them, to recycle them. Oh, and you can get my ring, too. I came up with the idea of getting one of my co collections. I decided that uh, someone I knew that was in the optical business, I said, would you save your pieces of, of lenses for me? I had no idea what I was going to do with them. And then I decided that I would cover this, what do you call it, Mel? Mannequin. Mannequin with glasses, with the lenses. And what I did, these are clear lenses that I painted, so it looks like she has a plaid top. And the, her uh, belt is made of colored, uh, of dark glasses and I painted that and these are clear glass and what I did is I painted the bottom part of her so it changed the color of glass and then of course these are all earrings and it this was I would this unlike my table I did not want to finish it. I had such a good time. And of course the back is completed also with the lenses. Okay. Hello there. Hello. How are you? How are you? Our hostess. Good to see you. Doing here. Oh, Hi. thanks for Hi. having us back. I'm doing a video. Suzanne wants to preserve the memory of her place. Fantastic. And since you're, she's going to where you are, maybe you can give us your views about what it's like to downsize? Well, I can tell you, downsizing is a challenge. Uh, the best part of it is being able to give stuff to kids and then give a lot to the goodwill uh -huh. and, and things like that. Do you experience any pain from downsizing? No. No, See, it's, it's actually it's easier. It's nice to get rid of things. But we've already talked about Suzanne and, and the difficulty she's going to have. So, uh -huh. What do you think is the difference between you and Suzanne? She's so eclectic. <laughs> yes. And he hasn't seen the place yet, but I've given him fair notice. I've so you think here. there are definite benefits to downsizing? Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. Oh, yeah. How big is your place at the Forum? 1,260 square feet. And how was your place, how big was your place before? Uh, about 26,000, 2,600. 2,600? Yeah. 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 And, yeah. and, and that, that was our, had, that was our downsized Yeah, we had downsized for 4,000 4, earlier. Yeah. What do you like best about the Forum? The friendship and people. People. Uh -huh. People. 
Yeah. Food's not bad. So what you give up in square footage, you make up for in friendship? That's it. That and, and, and we're, all our grandkids are up here. Yeah. So our yeah. kids and grandkids. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you. You bet. It's your turn. All right. You're, oh, we need talkers. Yeah. Oh, you have downsized also? Oh, you bet. Yes. We lived over the hill there in Los Altos Hills. Uh -huh. and, uh, and why did you decide to downsize? Well, we thought it would be a help for the kids. So they wouldn't have to do it for us because now we're in a much smaller place and uh -huh. uh, and then we got rid of a lot of things and gave it to them yeah and it just makes it easier yeah. and what do you like kids. about the forum oh <clears throat> the same thing they like the, the social <clears throat> activity and all the and the music and there's just so many things going on and the activity wonderful and, place oh yeah and, and wonderful people. and the physical activities and uh, yeah. and wonderful food is just a great place right I never okay. thought I'd like it that yeah. much yeah. Next. <clears throat> and you ma'am Yes. <laughs> what is it like to downsize? You have downsized, haven't you? Yes, I have. I lived in uh, Sonora and I had a big house on the maker and loved it, but then I lost my husband, so uh -huh. yeah. my sons wanted me to come back to the Bay Area. <laughs> yeah. Oh, did you have any fears about downsizing, living in a smaller place? Or? No, not with the people who live there. They're the most warm, <laughs> wonderful people you could ever so find. So you've downsized and gained a family? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. You love the forum. I love it. Okay. Yes. Thank you. And my sister lives there now, too. So oh, brought beautiful. family in. Yeah. <laughs> okay, next. Yeah. Yeah, now you live at the forum. Yes, I do. What do you like about the forum? Well, it's a nice place, and it's, it's, they take care of you later on, and <clears throat> I lost my husband, so it was lonely at home. Right. So I moved. Yeah. Was it painful to downsize for you? Yes. Oh, how did you cope with that? You gird your loins and go after it. And you're glad you did? Yes, yeah. I am, but I miss, still miss my home and my husband, but yeah. life goes on and you go with it. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Now you have downsized also. Oh, of course. Yeah, tell us about it. Well, I lived in my house down in Los Altos for 54 years, uh -huh. so I accumulated a lot of possessions, and, and I got rid of a lot. Uh -huh. And what did that feel like to get rid of your possessions? Actually, I kept most of the things that I really prized, and it, uh -huh. didn't, it didn't hurt me that yeah. much. Now, Suzanne has a pretty substantial place here with all these objects in the yard and in the house. Can you understand what she might be going through right now? She hasn't even started. <laughs> Now you also live at the Forum. Yes, I do. And you're visiting Suzanne. Did why? What prompted you to uh, move to the Forum and move from your home? Well, it was time to leave. We wanted to leave where the family was all grown up, and we were in a big house and just two people, and so we thought we would scale down a little bit. What was it like to scale down? Well, it's hard getting rid of all of the stuff you have, but we have four children and we they like to take the different parts of the uh -huh. house, you know, the furnishings and so on. Yeah. So but it was not too hard to get rid of everything. Yeah. We've got some Hi. What can I say that everybody else hasn't already said? <laughs> uh, well, begin where you want to. Mary. Begin where I want. My name's Rochelle That'd Rosen, be. and no. I love it at the forum. I've here for two years, almost two years, and. Um, I don't know, it just, it's, a, it's a very comfortable, warm yeah. environment. Yeah. Yeah. Have you had to downsize? Mm -hmm. Have you had to downsize? Oh yeah, I had a, a I, my house was 3,000 square feet and I'm down to 1,200 square feet. So. Uh -huh. so was it at all painful, uh, parting with objects? Or? No, I was able to oh. sift out the things I really enjoy having oh. and get rid of the rest of it. Mm -hmm. So it was okay. Yeah. It was okay. And what do you like best about the forum? I like the activities. We do a lot of, we go to theater, we go to art exhibits. We, yeah. I like that aspect. I want to keep busy and active, and it's very important to me. Right. So that's the best thing. And the second best thing, in, or equal, is a lot of nice people there, including the staff, a lot of support. The camera is on you now, Suzanne. Okay, now wait, come, come meet Barbara. All right. Barbara is a newcomer at the forum. So tell. Um, well, we've, we've lived there about a month and a half, a little over, and um, it's it's been it was quite a journey getting there. It took us about a year and a half to finally 
decide. And we and it was a big, big move because Jack had lived in his house for over 40 years, and and uh, you know everything was there that had to go away. Mm -hmm. So it took us a while, and uh, we're in, a, in an apartment very happily. Um, we're getting used to a different way of life. And um, yeah, how did you cope with downsizing? It must have been somewhat painful. Um, it, well, I I have been downsizing over the years. I lost a husband and so on and so on. But Jack hadn't, so it was even harder because it's difficult to help somebody else downsize when you don't share all the same memories and and um, and. You know, it, it was difficult. We had a wonderful woman help us move who specializes in seniors and moving. If you ever need her name, I do. It, it, well, she's Kate Browner. Is um, oh, oh, I've heard. Yeah, because she's moved a lot of people yeah, into the yeah. farm. She's wonderful. She can tell you what you can take and what you can't take, and you can listen or not. But she's usually right on. So. Well, good. Now, Suzanne, you also have to downsize, and <laughs> and you haven't really. You're in the very beginning stages of it. So, talk to us about what you're going through. I can't even think. I'm in a uh, a whole different mentality, but I know that I need to move, and I love the forum. Why do you need to move? I just can't take care of all of this. I really can't. <laughs> uh -huh. And I, I'm, I'm a slave to this house. I don't go on trips. And I'm just not having a good time anymore, except when I go to the forum twice a week to see Mr. Hal Taylor, and he plays his head off on the piano. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, okay. But I'm not moving in with him. No. <laughs> and, and, and I, not only that, I'm not going to ask you why not. No, no. And I wouldn't even move, move in with Brad Pitt. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Come on, Joe. And let the ask you, right? Yeah. <laughs> we can go. Oh, what a treat this is! Oh, thank Just you. Look at that magnificent tree. I know. Should we go inside? Yeah. Oh, and look at them. Look here. You can move in. Oh, yeah. You're on. Oh, okay. I'm always on. Oh. Suzanne, yes. what I really like are those down spouts. That's a conversation. Yeah. And then my son did a photograph. I like this. Right here. Let's take a look at the picture. The most important thing about my grandmother, she loves that. We have a lot of love. I do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen it. Huh.